Welcome to another edition of the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite and I will be hanging out with you today as we finish up our series on plants. Last topic we got to talk about is how plants defend themselves. So let's get our objectives and get going for the day. Just one thing for you to know or be able to do by the end of this video and that is to discuss plant responses to attacks from predators and pathogens. Easy enough. Should be a pretty short video I think. So first thing is why do plants be why are plants in need of defense, I guess? And, you know, it's tough to be a plant. You can't move, you can't run, and it doesn't help that you are the base of the trophic pyramid. All life on Earth depends on the consumption of your body parts. So plants obviously need ways to defend themselves or they would go extinct from the face of the Earth, and along with them, we would too. So for the rest of this video, we're going to talk about different strategies that plants use to defend themselves against all of the myriad predators that try to take advantage of them on a day-to-day -day basis. So two quick strategies to talk about. Um, imposters and hired guns, and here's what I mean by this. There are some plants that create molecules within themselves that are poisonous or toxic or imposters. One plant in particular produces a chemical that is structurally similar to the amino acid arginine, but it is not quite the same. So if an organism, say an insect, munches on that plant, it takes in this chemical and the insect's body, thinking that the molecule is arginine, incorporates that amino acid into proteins that it builds. Problem is, the molecule is not actually arginine, it's structurally just a little bit different, and it's just different enough that it screws up the structure of that protein, which means that the protein no longer works, and the insect kind of dies. So obviously that would be one chemical strategy for plants to defend themselves. Another chemical strategy is there are a lot of plants that secrete chemicals in response to predation that attract predators on the thing that's eating the plant. So another way to say this is if, for example, there is a caterpillar munching on the leaf of a plant, the plant might secrete a compound or a volatile gas that attracts a parasitoid wasp, which is the wasp you see there on the right. This type of wasp is kind of sneaky, kind of dirty. He flies up and he actually injects his eggs into the caterpillar. The larva then eat the caterpillar from the inside out. Obviously not a good situation for a caterpillar. So the way that the signal is sent is the combination between chemicals in the saliva and the caterpillar and the chemicals secreted by the plant in response to being munched upon creates this signal molecule that attracts the wasp. There are other plants that are typically preyed on by an herbivorous mite and when they're being eaten by a mite they actually send out signals that attract predators of that mite. So there's a lot of situations where plants attract the predators of whatever it is that is eating them. They also have co-evolved with pathogens. So a pathogen is anything that makes a plant sick. It's anything that makes anything sick actually. And Plants and pathogens kind of have to strike a balance because pathogens depend on plants being alive in order for them to be perpetuated from one generation to the next, but in perpetuating themselves, they kill the plants. So the plants and pathogens have co-evolved such that they've struck a balance where plants continue to live, but they also still get infected by the pathogens, so the pathogens continue to live. So this can't be a situation where the plants can completely get rid of the pathogen, though I'm sure they would love to, they haven't been able to do that, and the pathogen cannot completely kill off the plant. So we're going to finish up with a couple of strat a couple more strategies that plants use to protect themselves from pathogens. The ones before that was prote protecting themselves from predation, things that want to eat them. This is protection from things that want to make them sick. So first one is gene for gene recognition. When a virus enters a plant, infects a plant, it puts off proteins called effectors, and these proteins are recognized by resistance genes in a plant. They're called R genes. When these protein refract, sorry, when these protein effectors from the virus are recognized by the R gene, a whole series of responses are set off in the plant. Some of them include um, changing of cell walls that provide that prevent the virus or the pathogen from spreading from the area. It could include cell death, which obviously just holds the pathogen in that area. Um, it could include the signaling to the rest of the plant to produce molecules that will protect against this pathogen. But either way, there's a gene-for-gene -gene recognition, recognition where the effector protein from the virus or the pathogen is recognized by our genes that set off a defense in the plants. And let me just say before I go any further that 
for plants, first line of defense from a pathogen is their waxy cuticle, thick cell walls, all these things that actually keep the pathogen from getting out in the first place. But, you know, plants have got to exchange gases and stuff through stomata, so viruses and pathogens can get in that way. Also, anytime they get munched on by an herbivore, that provides spaces where these things can get in also. One of the more specific reactions that plants have is called the hypersensitive response. And you can see this, all the plant leaves on the right, you can see they're kind of mottled yellow and green. Sometimes the best way for a plant to protect the rest of the plant from a pathogen is to take a hit in a local area. So let's say a virus has infected our plant right here. The best way for that plant to keep the rest of the plant healthy is to cordon off and kill the cells in that area and that prevents the virus from being able to spread out to the rest of the plant. So a lot of times if you see a plant that looks sick, like it's got mottled patches on its leaves like this, it has been infected in that area and killed off the cells in just that area so that the pathogen does not spread to the rest of our plant. Finishing up today, um, plants are able to produce a response called systemic acquired resistance. The molecule I've got there is salicylic acid, which if I'm not mistaken is an active component in aspirin. I could be wrong about that. But when a plant is um, infected by a pathogen, it sets off this chemical signal that flows throughout the plant and it causes the plant to respond in multiple ways that I've kind of mentioned. Um, they include changing the composition of cell walls so that the pathogen can't spread. It also includes setting off signal trans transduction pathways that cause the plant to produce molecules that defend it against whatever pathogen has infected. So it's kind of like an immune response within the plant. Um, salicylic acid is one of those signal chemicals. When a plant is damaged, it actually sends out methyl salicylic acid, which is changed to salicylic acid, which signals the plant, hey, get ready, something has just infected us. So I hope that was a decent little introduction to plant defense for you. Remember that plants need to defend themselves from actual predation, and they also need to defend themselves from a pathogen that might be infecting them. Thanks for joining us on the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite, and hopefully we'll see you again.